A big part of sound design is making sure the player understands that A, that they've done something, B, that they've done something right, or C, if that's not the case, that they've done something wrong. Sound becomes involved at the earliest stages whenever possible so that we can help to fulfill the vision of the designers. The original plan was about this substance called anima. And anima represents the souls of those living on Azeroth. Each of the zones has an underlying theme. Sometimes that theme was something that we as sound designers kind of saw and felt and tried to bring out. And as we come up with sounds, we throw things against the wall. We play things for other sound designers we play things for the, the design leads. We adjust and we get feedback. And at that point, I assigned each of the zones to one of my sound designers to take point on. And I asked them to actually write up a document talking about what their feelings were about the zone. One of the interesting things about the story of Shadowlands is that we enter it in a period of drought. The different zones approach that drought in different ways. In Bastion, it took place in a slightly different way. Michael Hill came up with this excellent idea of of a system by which when anima is in a decent shape, the whole background shifts subtly to where the tones are purer and, and a little bit louder. And then when the fallen have invade or when the, the Maldraxxus forces invade, the sounds of the backgrounds actually subtly change to where it's a little bit more dissonant. When I sat down and started looking at Shadowlands and Bastion specifically, it felt like it was an opportunity for maybe a different approach to sound design because it's, su it's such a different space. It's a, it's a zone that isn't like the rest of Azeroth and it doesn't really have any kind of uh, earth analogy, right? It, it is a very strange place. Typically in World of Warcraft, when we're making environments, we're, we're looking at uh, things that have kind of real world analogies like forests, swamps, uh, mountains, you know, uh, deserts. The challenge with Bastion was that there are certain elements and certain creatures who kind of verge on sci-fi sounding. So I didn't want to lean on, on physical, literal sounds nearly as much as we normally would in a, in a kind of fantasy-based setting like WoW. Uh, so I would record things like bells and, and things with metal resonance, like striking a, a cymbal or even like a popcorn bowl, <laughs> all kinds of stuff that's like metal ringing sounds. And that also went into stuff like the, the bastion anima, the sound of those spells themselves. You know, typically things like schools of magic, like fire and, and frost and stuff, we kind of know what those sound like, but we don't have any definition for what anima sounds like. That's an interesting thing to play around with, uh, the sound of kind of an emotional state, something that feels peaceful and soothing, but with this tinge of something is wrong. The, the next zone was Revendreth. Aaron Kraft, along with Andrew Holscher, did an 
excellent job of really bringing that zone to life. Um, that zone was dark, but in a more gothic way. The two of them came up with this idea that there were two halves of Revendreth anima. In Revendreth, you have vampires as kind of the fantasy, and then the story is they're manipulating, they're, they're extracting pride from their, these souls. Both with vampires and with pride, there's this moment where things, they get out of control. And the best way I could put that into words was uh, the moment when feelings get the best of you. How this works in a sound is that we felt like that transition as far as how these sounds eventually are implemented and experienced in game need to come out in this old kind of over dramatic sort of way you know the vampires they they never like slowly transform like uh, werewolves or something uh, vampires they were just like put together one moment and then whoosh, you know the next moment there was the siren song, the rich, uh, classy, kind of snooty and snobby elements, which they thought reminded them of sirens. And then there was a rage portion. If you can trigger an imagination of like a place or a, a vibe simply from an associated sound, you know, it's, it's worth using that. Ardenweald, which is near and dear to my heart, that's the zone that I did the most work on, is the Fey zone. It, it is close to the Druid way of being. If you join the Ardenweald Covenant and you use the Ardenweald Garden and you uh, uh, plant seeds and grow and release a, a soul from the garden, that soul will talk to you very briefly in its own little hidden fey language before it flies off into the air. And one of the things that I did was take the voice of that, of that uh, it's a very subtle voice of the soul, and, and have it play every once in a while in the background when you're wandering around Ardenweald. In the, in the zones where they're rich in anima as opposed to the dead zones. And so it's almost as if the souls are always all around you, assuming the anima is flowing properly. And uh, so the, it, it adds to the whole unification of the zone. The job of doing sound design for games is an absolute blast. It, it's really cool to be able to, to sit down with a new zone and a new fiction and ask the question, what should this sound like? What would the people that live here sound like? What, what would all this stuff uh, do? <laughs> and, and how do I reinforce that with sound? It is a little bit less our job to make people stop and listen and more so help a person feel something when they're in an area. Sound is a little bit more subtle. Um, I like to say that sound goes in through the back door. It's, it's, it's a more of an unconscious process. Um, but in that way, we have this power to almost manipulate people into feeling the way that we want them to feel. Um, the, the anger of Maldraxxus and the, the grandeur of Bastion and the emptiness of the Maw are all very, very evident in the sound. And I, I really invite the players to pick a spot where there aren't too many uh, NPCs that'll get aggroed and just sit and listen. There's a great deal of subtlety and variety and real energy in each of the little nooks and crannies in all of the zones. It's really wonderful.